Okay, from now on, no cuts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, welcome. Um, for those who tune in this first time, hi, I'm Jess. I am a creative director by day and then a third culture daydreamy vlog by night. And hi, I'm Taya. I <laughs> am here to tell you about third culture stuff. <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, today uh, we've got an exciting topic for you. Um, <laughs> it very is exciting. Very exciting. It is called microaggression. <laughs> All right. Woo. Yeah, we decided to talk about this um, this grand word because it's so hard to verbalize any concept any sites of microaggression, but it's very necessary. Yes, because as third culture kids, uh, and also just going between different cultures, you kind of experience various microaggressions, yeah. and it's hard to articulate them yeah. because they are so micro. <laughs> so um, yes, what's the difference between a micro and a macroaggression? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, just, you know, Based on how it's written out, it's so micro, right? Why is it called microaggression? Because it's very hard to pinpoint exactly what happened and why is it damaging to people and uh, without enough context. But the fact that you have to explain the things all over again is another layer of damage yeah, to the person. Like exhausting to try and prove that it was a microaggression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like it's it goes like so hand in hand with um our identity as third culture people because the whole thing about microaggression is you can't really clearly identify it till you have a very short um sense of self. Mm. <clears throat> it's one of those things if you wanna like make a point to be like, Hey, am I just crazy or are these people like they don't like me or whatever and the whole term gaslighting actually comes mm. uh very hand in hand with microaggressions because yeah. because you can't prove these microaggressions then you get gaslit into thinking everything's fine but it's yeah. like these like everyday little tiny slides non-verbal or verbal um and environmental slights yeah um or snobs or insults yeah uh, you can't really catch unless you know the context or you know that person or they know you well yeah I do want to, I want to assume like all my, all our listeners, um, we kind of have a, a basic idea as what microaggression is mm. because it's... Our listeners uh, are smart? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We can get that. <laughs> our um, yeah, because even by now, everything we're saying sounds so vague. It, yes. that, that's how difficult it is to really explain what microaggression is. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I actually started to um, express my experience. It, it was the moment that uh, I find it a little bit too little too late. Mm. Because it was like when I was at my mental tipping point of really exploding from that last, last straw that really broke broke me mm. and not I, the camel or the not person. the camel but me and i started to just like turn on my camera sobbing and then describing the whole thing mm. i i don't even remember what i said but that was how um like traumatized mm -hmm. i was by the incident yeah and i think it's a lot of like I know as females, there's a lot of microaggressions towards yeah. females that we can't quite express. And that's why, you know, a lot of people are dubbed or a lot of females are dubbed, oh, that crazy woman who's going, you know, just got so emotional about something. But it's just because there's that tipping point, right? Yeah. 
Or like um, even simply as women, right?、Hmm. You will get comments like, "Oh, did you know you're that strong?" Oh my god, I get that a lot. Parenthesis is like because you're a woman. Yes, that's、uh-huh. like microaggress aggression right there. Yeah, and not maybe based on <laughs> culture, but I like as a woman in cycling, for example, and I think that's what motivated me to become a strong cyclist is because. You're riding with all these men who will be like, "Oh, I didn't expect you to keep up," kind of thing, and then、yeah. I'm like, "Well, then, fuck you! I'm gonna leave you behind." Yeah, and that that like is probably the wrong motivation to have to become strong, but it does fuel the fire. Yeah, of, like trying to, you know,、yeah. be better or whatever. Yeah, and in my case,、yeah. physically, I'm very weak, but you know, going back to like, I'm very vocal.、Um, I worked in an industry that's I、like、predominantly still men driven, and then it is built by how aggressive or how like、um, certain type of creative men could be. That's how the whole industry was like start rising up.、Um, and when I decide to be more vocal, I get comments like, "Oh, Jess, you you become so feisty," or like. Why are you, yeah? Why are you so aggressive? I'm like I'm just、uh, being become more expressive.、Mm. I'm just becoming more vocal about my opinions.、Yeah. That doesn't mean like I'm in a bad mood. That doesn't mean that、um, I'm always angry.、Mm. Just because before I was quiet, just because before I didn't say much, doesn't mean like now that I decide to say something. Now you know better. Yeah. 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 But I think that's also like the microaggressive like perceptions on. On sterile typing, genders,、yeah. races,、um, sexuality, like different different things. Yeah, yeah. So I guess、so. uh, microaggression could be clearly identified by using stereotypes or assuming someone is a specific stereotype and then making inappropriate comments or yeah you know, or comments that just to your、line. limited、yeah. understanding. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that.、Yeah. And then I think another. Aspect of the、uh, microaggression from people who created the incident. Oftentimes, they don't even know、mm. the the things they said, the things they done to the other party was、um, damaging or triggering to to those people because probably the intent was not ill or. So they thought,、mm. and I think that's why it's so important for people to really educate themselves because none of us is obligated to to explain to you our experience,、yeah. especially when we get hurt.、Mm. But I think that's often time what we were asked to do,、yeah. and and then you know like the most、um, common. Uh, environment will be like workplace, right?、Mm, mm, mm. When you're trying to address something to HR, they constantly push you be like, "Where's the evidence? Where's the documentation?"、Right. You're、yeah. like, "There's no such things." So I feel like one obvious. And you're like too sensitive. Yeah, and then they're like, "Well, if you don't have the evidence, we can't do anything about it."、Yeah. You're like, "Well, it's microaggression. What kind of evidence do you expect me to provide?" So what are microaggressions? What kind of examples do we have of? So I can bring out my own examples that I. It's like on top of my head.、Hmm. It was that 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 last straw experience was like few years back.、Um, I was in this meeting, so I was still back in New York. I was in in this client meeting with a room of not just men, but white men. I was the only female slash. Asian female, right? And then that put me into a position of being easily dismissed, being easily like、um, just undermined, or they just they didn't pay any attention to me.、Mm-hmm. I was presenting this idea to them, right? I was the design lead on this project, and I was like presenting the whole time. Supposedly, they will remember who I am,、mm-hmm. what my name was. Or even the fact that I was in the room, but after the whole presentation was over, they they kind of just 
talk to my boss mm. who was also in that meeting asking questions and then my boss would try his best to like you know throw the question back on me and be like just what do you think just what do you think yeah. but the whole time on the client side they never once mentioned my name never made eye contact never never made the efforts to even recognize my existence in the room yeah it's like going to somewhere to shop with let's say a partner like a male partner and yeah all they do is talk to them instead of like even if you're the one that exactly yeah so it's like that incident that kind of my progression is like they didn't even have to say anything to my face right or make any comments directly to me but the whole fact that i was dismissed and to the level that I started to doubt my own existence was terrible. But how could you describe that whole incident to someone who who's never been in that position? Yeah. And then that itself is one form of microaggression. Yeah. I find there's a lot of that in the workplace, especially from different cultures. So mm-hmm. when you encounter within like the home culture, different, like an outside culture coming in, there's a lot of microaggressions in terms of assumptions of what they understand or who they are yeah um like in work meetings oftentimes in japan they're like oh you wouldn't get it because you're not japanese or Mm. things like that just little comments even if they don't mean it as insulting it's kind of like well maybe we can maybe that's not important yeah maybe you can try and explain or maybe we can work on something that you know if the goal is the same then you should still include everyone no matter yeah what culture they're in and then i think like um from culture point of view um it's very common the one very common microaggression um behavior (laughs) or comment that a lot of people get is to commenting on people's language skill Mm, that is the most classic microaggressive um form of communication yeah. anyone can ever encounter and especially to people like us yeah is we we talked about this over and over in previous episode but in this context is more like this is microaggression when you when you comment on other people's language skill in your defense it might be a compliment do you think the burden is on the person who's being microaggressed microaggressy microaggressed uh, to educate the other person of why it's not okay it should never be on the receiving end i think but what if the microaggressy doesn't understand it's on them to educate themselves Mm. i will say that hundred times thousand times i think it's up to us like the receiving end it's up to us if we want to provide context, right? Mm. So I have the uh, emotional bandwidth and an energy bandwidth to be like, let me break it down for you. But I'm not obligated to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's already hard enough for us to experience it, to ask us to kind of like revisit the experience and relive that trauma just so that you can understand That's that doesn't make any sense at all. I heard a good way to kind of express this is not is to be like when you did x or when you said x it made Mm -hmm. me feel this way yeah and then that way you know if people are trying to actually like learn about things and they'll be like okay that certain action or words or the set of words makes this particular person feel a certain way yeah don't invalidate those that person's feelings yeah um, but you learn from that and kind of yeah. figure out. Yeah, and then I think, um, <laughs> did you learn that from a therapy session? Because I also heard that from my therapist. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in somewhere. that. <laughs> it's, it's in like, the textbook. It's like how to communicate with your significant other or something, right? For or dummies. how to resolve conflict is. For dummies. Is be making it like action oriented or like, you don't make it about them and like their personality. It's like when you did or when you said yeah so it's not about like them being a bad person it's about the action and then it made me yeah. feel it's a way. it's so hard especially when it comes to culture mm-hmm. i think um uh, i want to keep 
reminding ourselves that why we're talking about this as third culture kids perspective is because usually those like micro aggressive incidents tied in back all the way back to the culture yeah and then it's so hypersensitive to everyone like people will take it personal yeah. when you are trying to discuss uh micro aggressive uh, aggressive incidents or behaviors and so there's a lesson here just don't take anything personally not everything is about you i thought everything was about me <sighs> anyways microaggression <laughs> yeah I, I think it's always like a two-way street when it comes to cultural empathy and and kind of being more understanding towards one another yeah. and that's also one thing that could circle back to like microaggression and how we can be better at not doing it yeah um i have another example in the workplace where and i don't know if it's like a power thing where <laughs> they want to like hold all the information yeah um like you know being left out of conversations being left out of meetings because they just wanted to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the client or things like that but is that just Maybe that's more of an aggression, less of a microaggression. That's an aggression. That's a straight up, yeah. like, in your or face aggression. aggressiveness, maybe. Because... Yeah, and that's, like, I think it's more like a company culture than culture culture. Yeah. Because I know what you're talking about. Our whole theme of this podcast, that question itself is the iconic microaggress question. Which that's is, true. where are you really from? And why is where are you really from hurtful? Because it's one insensitive, mm. and then you, once again, it's play on ignorance, right? I think that brought up a very interesting point in my progression. It's like, as a sentence or a question itself, the, the, the level of damage might be lighter, relatively speaking, but the more you drill on that... It's, it's a like, systematic hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... You, if you keep going or challenging what other people are feeling, that's the real damage right there mm -hmm. behind every microaggressive behaviors or, or comments. Like, mm -hmm. not just that, like, we we looked it up a few questions. Yeah. Where are you really from? You don't look like your age. You don't look like a certain sexuality yeah. because of how you dress, how, how you style, how you so like look. Like you're from this particular country, or, so you must really like... Are you stuff. really X, Y, and Z? I yeah. think any of those comments or questions that can challenge people or trigger people yeah. on an identity level or a, a question their belongings are the type of microaggression that we've all experienced yeah. and find it damaging and hurtful and i feel like third culture kids get a lot of these microaggressions because they're so culturally ambiguous yeah and so you're yeah. put in a lot of situations where you could be you know one culture or the other but you know you don't really know right yeah 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 um i do remember because of the the whole third culture i've struggled even now right even though i i might sound it more confident or i sound more sure about what i'm saying yeah. there's a constant like internal battle of who i am or mm. where i belong what's my identity and everything like that every time when i receive microaggressive comments yeah. it's kind of like it it um un un undoes a lot of work that i've worked so hard on you start doubting yourself yeah like you start doubting your yourself yeah because even though whatever people are saying might not be true mm. whatever they're saying might might be coming from somewhere that's like good or nice yeah. but the the things you said would trigger people at some point yeah in a way that you might never understand yeah yeah oh actually a really i get this a lot especially in japan there's this concept of being like a pure-blooded Japanese. So I see a lot of social media posts mm. where people are interviewing people and they're like, oh, where are you from? And for some reason, a lot of these people have have to say, oh, I'm pure Japanese. As if like, 
that's you yeah know, something that we should strive for, but we can't even help it if we're not. Especially yeah, and, as like a mixed race Japanese person, right? You know, yeah, it's always like a thing in the back of their minds that like I'm not pure Japanese, whereas like they are. And so when you say, "Oh, I'm pure Japanese," that in itself is kind of like, okay, yeah, I see. Because that you then, sense. then you watch the content, and and by watching it, it's also like, um, it's indirect microaggression towards you, right? Yeah, and I, yeah. So I feel like, um, to your point about this whole pureness, I think it, it it goes beyond just in Japan. Like centuries, people are fighting for like a pure bloodline for some reason. It costs like so much historical II, damage. I mean, yeah. yeah, and it also is not always so straightforward. Yeah, because I kind of think it comes from a place of wanting to identify other pure. <laughs> Bloods in a way because they're like, oh, if you're born here, raised here, then you must be like me. Therefore, we must be able to get along because maybe for them, there's so much social anxiety with trying to get along with people who are not, who don't understand them. So maybe it comes from that place where. But again, yeah, like I said, it's like two way street. Yeah. I feel like a lot of microaggression um, behavior is people. Don't even bother to understand others. Yeah, yeah. And you just apply what you understand in your own bubble. Yeah. Onto people unfairly, and that that itself is damaging. And so, why some some of the backhanded comments is damaging is it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Is when you are so busy trying to use your value and being like because you you kind of match my expectation. Let's say um, your English level, right? So, like, if I make a comment saying that your English is so good, it's because in my head you reached a level that I expect you to reach. Mm -hmm. So I say that to you. Yeah, that itself is like so ignorant. And then, what do you expect the other person to be like? Oh, thank oh, you. So thank much. you. Yeah, like they well, don't live they for you. So. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but. Yeah. I, I think this is one thing I want to encourage people to kind of label their feelings for. Whenever you experience microaggression, like, if you are not very self-aware as a person from a start, mm -hmm. you might not even notice till, like, later on. But every time when that happened to you, you will feel off. Mm -mm -mm. Even after. You might not know why, but you'll feel off. Mm -hmm. And... And then it's up to you to like, to be like, do I want to dissect this feelings later on, or I just I'm just gonna let it go. But the thing is, you never let negativity go; it just pile up. Yeah. And that's when you go through this ex explosion period and face. Yeah, that's why like, you should take up aggressive sports so you can punch and kick things. Yeah, Life that's how we. <laughs> that's how we channel our. <laughs> Without any therapy. <laughs> Do you think it's easy to tell between, like, negative intention for microaggression, but or, like, ignorant intention or no intention, I guess? And if so, mm. like... Because I think, even for me, I'm sure I've done things that are ignorant yeah. and, and it comes yeah. across and it makes other We're all people guilty. bad with that. Yeah. yeah. So, like, at what point... <laughs> Do you yourself, when you feel negative about someone's action and you realize, oh, they're just ignorant or whatever, is that like a way, I guess for me, it's a way to be like, oh, because they're ignorant, I don't need to feel so bad about it. Or do you still mm -hmm. feel shitty about it because the world is, world is so, I don't know, unequal I think or... Personally, um, I am a very vocal person. Not what? always. You are? Oh my gosh. I know. Such a surprise. No idea. Um, but it all started from, ironically, back when you were a baby, came out back. of the womb, <laughs> and you're like, doctor, don't even once say a, shit about my hair. Once <laughs> upon a time. Um, but it all came from that very incident that, that I, I brought up in the beginning of the episode. Um, I used to be the type of person to be like, I recognize me receiving some comments that I don't feel comfortable, mm. but I also know they 
didn't mean anything bad. Mm. They meant well, so I'm just gonna let it go. Yeah. Because why bother? They don't even. They wouldn't understand. Yeah. Um, and then I experienced that whole because I didn't really, in a healthy way, kind of let it out or kind of express myself or yeah. really detox from all the microaggressive experience. I exploded, and. That's when I realized, you know what? It's not that I'm gonna pick a fight every time I receive microaggressive comments,、mm. but I'm also gonna do the job of providing the opportunity for people to understand what、mm. that means. Or there are people like me who feels a certain way. It's up to them to take it or leave it. Yeah. But I don't mind doing it because there are so many other people like me. Who deal with this shit every single day,、mm. but they don't have the energy to actually cut back,、mm -mm. and it's sad. There's an element of like stoicism in there where you're like, okay, you know what? It's just like water off duck's back. You can just like ignore it and move on. Yeah. Then if everyone did that, then no. Can one I, yeah. Can I just bring like a very parallel, very similar example?、Mm. You know, we nowadays we talked about. The it used to be a taboo, rape culture.、Mm, okay, and you know,、we're、like in、there. yeah, we're going there <laughs>、okay. because I think that's also like one thing to talk about from like sexual harassment to actual rape. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sexual harassment is so hard to pinpoint why because it's also a form of microaggression. That is true.、Yeah. Yes, and then you go into rape beast because it's more physical. People can identify now, but guess what? That's already too late. Right. But I want to go into the the part of the vic. Victim,、um, that's being not that I've been in their shoes before,、um, but what I've gathered the information is like at some point the mental state is they remove themselves, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so like that kind of notion is kind of relatable, and a tiny bit when and when when you talk about stoic、um, emotions in、right. the microaggression. Yeah, yeah, you shut down. Yeah, but that's not healthy. Like that's not how you should deal with right, right incidents like such. So that was an extreme example, but I feel like that's necessary to bring up because it's it's like it's easier to measure it that、yeah. way. <laughs> it's so interesting, also, like when you kind of like what you were saying before with work and、mm. trying to prove something to HR, like something that happened. Yeah, you get in a mindset of having to log all these things. So if when anything small happens, you're like, oh, better, better get some proof, like what、yeah. time it happened, what、It's、they、sad. said, what they did, and you get in a, and then you start looking out for these microaggressions, and then that like makes you upset and sad, and like you realize、yeah. how shitty everything is. Yeah, because the reality is because we hop around cultures a lot. We've、yeah. got our practice. Yeah. So like now you know me at my work. Workspace. I have mentees asking me like, I've encountered X, Y, and Z. What should I do? Like automatically, I'd be like, first of all, document it everything. Yeah. Second of all, like if you're a verbal communication, just like write a recap so that you have paper trail. Like,、mm. why should I even think in that way? Yeah. Or prepare other people to think that way? Yeah. Because it's a constant like struggle for a lot of people. But the reason why I can reflect so fast. <laughs> Is because you're so used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, do third culture kids make really good lawyers? Probably, probably.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're aggressive enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a sad truth of living in today's society. Microaggressions,、yeah. macroaggressions, middle aggressions.、So、all the aggressions. all the aggressions. Actually, the whole term "hafu" actually、yes. in itself is kind of a microaggression because what you're Implying is that they're half.、Mm. I mean, they're not. They、complete. are half. Like they're, whatever.、Yeah. They're not complete. Yeah. Um. So I was talking to this one person who had kids who were half, and he was saying how like, oh, I I don't like that term. I'd rather say they're full. <laughs> yeah. They're full this or full that, and and I thought about it. It's like, oh, interesting. That's true. And you know, if you're constantly being told you're half, half, half,、mm. what does that do like subconsciously as well? So I yeah, think, as a third cultural, multicultural person. You know, saying I'm half this or I'm a, a I'm part this, I'm part this. One, you're saying you're not full, but two, you're also being othered all the time. 
Mm. So there's never an element of, oh, you belong with us. Yeah. Um, it's always either, oh, you're you're just a little bit us, but you're also a little bit other as well. Yeah. Plus, you're you're half. <laughs> you're not, you're never gonna be full. It's fetishizing this half sort of culture. Yeah. Uh, because they're they take the best of both worlds. Or, yeah, you know? and I think that probably that itself, that kind of concept is also a microaggressive towards people in this in that community. Another thing that is really um, interesting about microaggression in different cultures is that just because you're from a different culture or like a different race, you get really inappropriate questions or comments. Mm. Um, like if you're um, like dating a black guy, for example, mm. they'll say like, oh, his dick must be so big or like, just because someone's from a different culture or like different races, they think it's appropriate or fine to ask all these very intrusive questions that mm. would normally mm. be really off color and you would not say that within, you know. Yeah, I think going back to something that you asked earlier, how I make sure or keep myself in check mm. is I have to be okay with people correcting me hmm. because I think we're all guilty of being ignorant and yeah also you know you can really look at whoever you're speaking to and look at their micro expressions and you know see how they're feeling and whatever you're saying if they don't look like they're having a good time or if they're not reacting in a way that's positive then maybe you can take that into account yeah or, and then also just like not everything is about you so be okay with sometimes you do have to fully be present of what other people's are feelings and mm. experiencing that's very important yeah yeah i'm starting to learn how to do that like okay actually they did this, they did the study about how people are really shitty at reading people <laughs> and so I forget the statistics around it, but they did this thing where they're like, okay, we're going to pick two people and you're going to try and figure out how they're feeling. And yeah. it turns out like something like 80% of the time people were wrong. So as humans, we're just naturally not good at reading people. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you have to try and like really be more empathic to yeah people other people's experiences and not just assume that they're going to react a certain way yeah and do you think like to us in in the shoes of being third culture being part of the third culture community we have a better um i would say we're more empathetic in that in that way I think in a way you are exposed to more. So mm -hmm. when you are exposed to more, you do learn that there's other types of reactions or other opinions or points of view. So yeah. in a way it makes third culture kids better at having that empathy or open-mindedness. Yeah. But I do think there are still people who don't make an effort to learn. Who yeah. will still travel and just take all like the fun bits of traveling around or living in another culture but not bothering to like dive into what it means to be from that culture or whatever and just take a really ignorant stance on it yeah which i, I think is such a waste of opportunity waste of life waste of life um i think in the end like don't be afraid to be yourself or yeah. voice your thoughts or opinions yeah as long as you're coming from like a good place and then if it's insensitive to learn from it yeah try and be a little bit more sensitive yeah but also you know be bold because without that boldness you don't kind of show other people you know who you are either yeah because i, I think culture. that's a very very interesting not interesting but important point to stand your ground because hmm. those are questions of like being third culture is it uh like um does it make us better global citizens or we just eventually lose our authenticity yeah, yeah. in us? But I like, feel do like... Do we want more people that are third culture or multiple yeah. cultures? Or do we just want to like... Yeah. But I think to your point, it's like, have a strong stand, have your own belief, and then stand by it, own up to it, be open to being corrected because... Nothing is so black and white. Nothing is absolute. Mm. 
right or wrong but as long as you know like you have that strong core value that you hold on to you're not going to lose yourself and then i do believe all third culture people or whoever is curious about different cultures have the opportunity to become a better global citizen yeah that's yeah. true yeah so there you have it folks let's do our best to become better global citizens <laughs> That is the, what we want to end. Oh, that's not the lesson. <laughs> that's not the lesson. The lesson but is <laughs> microaggressions, they're fun because they're micro. They're not fun. So conclusion, microaggression, not good. Not good. Not good. They're very micro, so they're hard to see. Yeah. And then we, the takeaway is one, encouraging you to pay attention to how you feel when receiving a certain comment. Right. How people feel when you make a certain comment and you can formulate and if you want to educate someone about how you're feeling or how it's not okay then you can take it to when you did or said this it made me feel and that. then yeah i think it's always good to be culturally curious because that's how we learn a lot of vocabularies and emotions of how we label different incidents and then protect ourselves better in those um moments because it's it's inevitable microaggression will always be around unfortunately but how you can protect yourself better not to make it worse is really to stay open yeah be humble open yourself up new experiences they're fun all right okay. so here we go we've got our contemplative thought of the day yay wait i get to pick this time uh, okay. and then you get to read it okay here we go <clears throat> dude i can't read your writing Oh, <laughs> Bhutan. Oh, it's a, Bhutan. It's a, it's a country. Bhutan. Okay. Oh, it's a U. Bhutan measures its prosperity through gross national happiness than GDP. Yeah. How cool is that? How do you measure gross national happiness? That sounds gross. <laughs> okay. So. That's the end of our episode. <laughs>